to Diabetes Care Club. You'll be glad you did. My first time I saw Martina was in a tournament on the USTA tour in Florida. And this was at a country club. And there was Martina walking around in a bathing suit. First of all, she's about 50 pounds overweight. She came over really chunky, you know, this fat look, Chuck Spocking girl. And she had all this jewelry draped around her neck and her bracelets and rings. I chuckled. I just thought, oh my God, we're a lot different. It was Chris very feminine, um, girl next door, dainty, painted fingernails, playing pretty tennis. She played feminine tennis, and I played masculine tennis. And then she looked the part, and I looked the part. It was fire and ice. Martina was fire. She'd cry after losing a match, throw her a racket. We couldn't put her on television right away because she was in somebody's arms with tears. And Chris would just walk in minutes after a match, wipe herself off with a towel, sit down, and give you 10 minutes on television. Chris Ebert was ice cold, win or lose. Martina was the kind of person who would do better on the court because then she could forget all the terrible stuff that was invariably going on around her. It wasn't that way at all with Chris Everett. The court was not any kind of refuge. It was just a place where she went to work. Chris was always much more together than she had to be because that's how she played the game. Uh, she really didn't have that many weapons, but her biggest weapon was her mental strength and keeping her emotions in control. No two competitors have ever competed against each other as much as those two. That'll never happen again. 80 times? Which two boxers or which two teams are ever going to play each other 80 times? Over 18 years and with such high quality stuff. You can't find another rivalry like this one. Bird and Magic, Nicholas Palmer, it doesn't exist. The situation in which the two greatest players of all time also happen to be, over a period of years, best friends on the tour is unprecedented. Chris really had her number for a long time in their storied rivalry. Chris totally dominated the early years of the Chris and Martina show because she was fitter. It told Martina one thing, she had to be quicker. She had to be stronger. She hired Nancy Lieberman to be her coach. She began to find out about certain kinds of diets and certain kinds of uh, physical training, and then she began getting whipped and beaten by Nancy Lieberman uh, to get into the best shape of her life. Martina took strength conditioning and training to a totally new level in women's tennis. Nancy taught Martina to hate me. I remember we were practicing on courts right next to each other, and certain times Martina and Nancy would look over at me and just start laughing. It's just kind of mean. I did imagine Chris as the enemy when I was practicing, when I was doing all those workouts. I imagined Chris on the other side of the net. A lot of drills I did were designed to beat Chris. Martina not only wanted to beat her, she wanted to crush her. For years of what she felt was, was Chris's domination of her. She's won it so many times. I'm glad she finally let me do it once. You asked Chris Everett what she was doing right after that. She was running the steps at uh, football stadiums to keep up with Martina. I did realize that a better athlete had come along and that it wasn't enough to be a great tennis player, that you had to be a great athlete. It jolted me and it shook me up and I was like, okay, what can I do to try to figure out to stay with her? I just wanted to stay with her. And for a while I did. Without each other, those two would never have been as great as they were. They just kept raising the stakes on each other. And as they kept raising each other's games, they raised the whole sport. Through the first five years of their 17-year rivalry, Everett won 20 of 25 matches. But when Chrissy retired in 1989, Martina led the series 43 victories to 37. The tide turning for her in the 1978 Wimbledon final, Martina's first slam victory over Chrissy. I was up like setting a break against Martina, but I was falling in love, so I didn't care. I said, well, obviously you don't want to go out tonight. She said, what are you talking about? Of course we're going out. You know, let's go. And that to me right then showed it that to me, the Wimbledon finals didn't mean as much. We went out that night and the finals was forgotten. As really serious and, and dedicated to my tennis as I was, I was a sucker for romance. In the spring of 1979, Everett's honeymoon with John Lloyd was hardly over when her streak of 125 victories on clay was ended by Tracy Austin. She would lose five straight times to her young nemesis, and in 1980, was briefly dethroned as the number one player. Everett was struggling to find the right balance in her life. 
My mental energies and emotions were going into my tennis, and I didn't have a lot left over for a, an emotional relationship. Eventually, Everett and Lloyd would divorce. By 1982, tennis was back as her top priority, and she picked up a relationship that would never quite fade. In the mid-80s, they become friends again, and they do it in a very uh, touching way. On the court at the French Open uh, in 1985 and 1986, they played two of the greatest women's finals ever. Playing on her favorite surface, Everett, who had lost 15 of her last 16 matches to Martina, wins the first of back-to-back -back French Opens. On the court. They went through 18 years of each other's lives. They always knew when a romance had gone bad in each other's lives. You know, they always knew what was going on behind the scenes. They made each other cry every other weekend. Stop struggling with heavy hoses that are kinked and deliver little or no water, or worse, break. Introducing the incredible Flexible Hose. Turn the water on, and it expands up to three times its original length. So not available in stores, so you must call now. Billie Jean invented women's tennis, but Chris is the one who made it popular. Over the portal that leads out from the women's locker room and the, and the main club at Wimbledon out onto center court is part of the Kipling poem, If. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. It's the last thing they see before they step on court for a Wimbledon championship. And I've always campaigned to put Chris Everett's picture next to it because I don't know of anyone in the game of tennis that lived up to Kipling's challenge better than Chris Everett. In 1989, after 19 years during which she won a record 157 singles titles and 18 Grand Slams, Everett played her last slam event at the U.S. Open, losing a quarterfinal match to Zena Garrison. It's all over. With that shot, an era has ended. Mary Carrillo and I were standing in the eaves of the, the stadium. Chris came off of the court for the last time, and we looked at each other, and tears were streaming down our faces. It was literally like watching your girlhood end. Waiting for her was Andy Mill, whom she married in 1988. With tennis now behind her, Everett would set out to raise a family. It's almost like I'm more of myself since I've had kids. I feel like more comfortable within my skin. This has been wonderful for me. I feel like I'm more like Chrissy. She said to me, I look at myself on film and I see this grim fixed expression and it wasn't me. It wasn't how I was. It wasn't who I was. All of the control that she displayed on the tennis court, she's almost delighted in letting go. When she won, the U.S. Open, she never shed a tear. When she won Wimbledon, she never shed a tear. But when her son's kindergarten teacher told her that she had a great kid, she bawled her eyes out. Late in 2006, Chris and Andy divorced after 18 years. A year and a half later, Everett married for the third time to Hall of Fame golfer Greg Norman. Chris is someone who needs to be needed. She has needed to be needed by John Lloyd, and Andy Mill, and perhaps now Greg Norman. And Greg Norman, from what I hear, has a tremendous capacity to give to her. He lets her be who she is. It hasn't all been a, a smooth, happy sailing. She's had broken romances. Through it all, she's managed to maintain a certain consistency of herself. She's very true to herself in that way. She's managed to say, OK, I am who I am. I'm not perfect. I've been married twice, and both marriages have failed. I've had these high-profile romances, but it's my turn. It's OK for me to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. I can be a great mother, a great tennis champion, a great businesswoman, and still be happy. Chris Everett endured, spanning the careers of Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova. Each brought out her best and sometimes paid the price. Win or lose, TV loved her. In the wide shot, we saw the girl, and close up, the woman. 
Yet the more she grew and changed, the more she stayed the same, showing us that womanhood is an inside job and that winning, while not the only thing, is vital to a true champion's identity. For Sports Century, I'm Chris Fowler. find out about certain kinds of diets and certain kinds of uh, physical training and then she began getting whipped and beaten by Nancy Lieberman uh, to get into the best shape of her life. Martina took strength conditioning and training to a totally new level in women's tennis. Nancy taught Martina to hate me. I remember we were practicing on courts right next to each other and certain times Martina and Nancy would look over at me and just start laughing. It's just kind of mean. I did imagine Chris as the enemy when I was practicing, when I was doing all those workouts. I imagined Chris on the other side of the net. A lot of drills I did were designed to beat Chris. Are ever going to play each other 80 times? Over 18 years and with such high quality stuff. You can't find another rivalry like this one. Bird and Magic, Nicholas Palmer, it doesn't exist. The situation in which the two greatest players of all time also happen to be, over a period of years, best friends on the tour is unprecedented. Chris really had her number for a long time in their storied rivalry. Chris totally dominated the early years of the Chris and Martina show because she was fitter. It told Martina one thing, she had to be quicker. She had to be stronger. She hired Nancy Lieberman to be her coach. She The Diabetes Care Club. You'll be glad you did. My first time I saw Martina was in a tournament on the USDA tour in Florida. And this was at a country club. And there was Martina walking around in a bathing suit. First of all, she's about 50 pounds overweight. She came over really chunky, you know, this fat look, Chuck Spocking girl. And she had all this jewelry draped around her neck and her bracelets and rings. I chuckled, I just thought. Martina was the kind of person who would do better on the court because then she could forget all the terrible stuff that was invariably going on around her. It wasn't that way at all with Chris Everett. The court was not any kind of refuge. It was just a place where she went to work. Chris was always much more together and she had to be because that's how she played the game. Uh, she really didn't had that many weapons, but her biggest weapon was her mental strength and keeping her emotions in control. No two competitors have ever competed against each other as much as those two. That'll never happen again. 80 times? Which two boxers or which two teams? Oh, oh my God, we're a lot different. He was Chris very feminine, um, girl next door, dainty, painted fingernails, playing pretty tennis. She played feminine tennis and I played masculine tennis. And she looked the part and I looked the part. It was fire and ice. Martina was fire. She'd cry after losing a match, throw her a racket. We couldn't put her on television right away because she was in somebody's arms with tears. And Chris would just walk in minutes after a match, wipe herself off with a towel, sit down and give you 10 minutes on television. Chris Everett was ice cold, win or lose. <laughs> 